Before we get into our, our scripture reading, it's going to come from Mark chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 12. And before we get into that, I wanted to, uh, last Sunday we commissioned a number of folks from our church to go down to Belize for a mission trip. And so if you go to partnersforbelize.com, you can uh, catch up and see how they're doing and and what they're up to. And here we have um, Casey Endicott and Morgan Powell uh, visiting with some some children. Uh, They're running a, a, a medical clinic, a dental clinic, and sometimes the lines are so long uh, for these services that parents who have brought their kids, well, gee, what, what are, what are, what are we going to do with our kids? Well, our teenagers and some of our adults are playing with them, games, and get the parachute out, and painting faces, and all those kind of things kind of help them uh, pass the time of, of day. Uh, we have a construction crew, and we have uh, our high schoolers, uh, Isaac Gilmer and Nick Nelson, uh, Elder Scott Center, and Brian Stewart. Uh, I think this guy's trying to show, hey, we're on the construction team with a hammer. It looks like he's getting ready to hit Scott, so <laughs> no word on what happened next. Um, but then here we have uh, doing puppet shows and stuff like that for the kids. So we have Lindsay Reed up here, and Casey Endicott, Emily Parks, uh, Teresa's back here, and um, Darla Parks right there. So uh, you can go on partnersforbelize.com and check them out and see how they're doing. Uh, they'll be coming back. Uh, I believe next Thursday. If you get our newsletter or if you get our Thursday email, uh, most of you are aware by now that uh, my last Sunday as the pastor here will be uh, March the 11th uh, as I've accepted a position at the University of Dubuque in Dubuque, Iowa to be their vice president of philanthropy. And they have a uh, Dubuque seminary is there as well. And it's a Presbyterian affiliated university, Presbyterian uh, seminary as well. And many of you have said, well, where's Dubuque? Well, there it is. Uh, right down on top of the little bubble there of, of Iowa. Uh, it's on the west side of the Mississippi River. Uh, so we're still on the west coast. Um, but we have Chicago, look, Chicago three hours to the east. And uh, Minneapolis is where Julie's brother uh, lives up here in Minneapolis. Julie grew up here in Nina, Green Bay, Milwaukee, all in this area right here. So it'd be a little bit closer to home. And then here's a picture of the entranceway into University of Dubuque. I received a, uh, excuse me, my sinuses have been driving me crazy this week. And so um, I had a a pastor friend of mine from up in Lebanon, Oregon, uh, texted me and said, I, when he found out the news, I thought things were going well at FPC. And uh, I called him up and I said, they are. Uh, They're they're going great. Uh, Budget's up, attendance is up. Uh, We're sending people to Belize for mission work. Our elders are doing what they're doing. Small groups are popping up. I mean, I I think everything's going great. Children's ministry is fantastic. I mean, things are going great. Um, And so uh, let me just make sure I'm clear uh, so, you know, people, you know how people are. Um, FPC had, had no bearing in the decision. Uh, I'm not mad at anybody. No one's mad at me. At least, I don't think so. Yeah, they, yeah, they weren't mad last week. Uh, this week, they are. Um, someone came up to me and said, did we not take good enough care of you? Are you, really? I've been so well taken care of here as the pastor of this church. I mean, I just, uh, we've been very well taken care of. Uh, There's uh, no concern on that part. Um, There's no factions in the church. Uh, There's no split. There's no group trying to get rid of me. Uh, Anything like that. Everything's going great, which makes it, in one sense, the perfect time to leave because things are really strong. Things are really healthy. Uh, you know, I would hate to leave if things were going downhill. That would really bother me. Uh, it's bothered me to leave anyway. Uh, but if I, if, I left, if I left FPC when it's in bad shape, that, I would feel even, even worse. Um, so that's kind of what's going on. Um, so my last Sunday is March, Sunday, March the 11th. And... Um, 
that there are not enough words uh, in the dictionary uh, to describe uh, how much this church has meant to me and to my family. I uh, just, I won't say it goes without saying because I'm going to say it a lot in the next uh, five weeks or so, but uh, I love FPC. I, I love this place. Uh, the, the, the biggest transition, the most, the most difficult transition that will take place is that there is no FPC in Dubuque, Iowa. I mean, they got churches there, but there's no church like this church, and that will be the most the difficult transition. So I love being at FPC. It's going to be hard to imagine being anywhere else on a Sunday morning. Our scripture lesson is from Mark chapter 2. It's a very familiar story. Many of us may have heard this. goes like this, as Mark tells it. And when he, that's Jesus, uh, returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home, and many were gathered together, so that there was no more room, not even at the door. And, as he, and he was preaching the word to them. And they came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts, Why does this man speak like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, why do you question these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise, take up your bed, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose and immediately picked up his bed and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. Let us pray. Gracious God, may you uh, decrease. May, <laughs> may I decrease. May we decrease. And may you increase. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. What, what, what keeps you from accepting others? You meet someone, uh, there's all sorts of things going through your mind. Am I going to like this person? Are we going to get along? Uh, or I can tell right off the bat, this is not going to work. I'm um, heading the other direction. What, what, what keeps us from just, nah, I'm not so sure. Or what, what allows us to just accept people full on? Uh, oh, we have the same job. Uh, we're in the same social class. We wear the same clothes, it looks like. Same style, same backgrounds. What is it, what is it that allows us to, to be with, uh, with one another? Or accept one another? I'm doing a wedding at the end of this month. And um, I was meeting with the, the groom and the bride-to-be. And uh, she said to me, uh, about the vows. I'm like, yeah, about the vows. She said, we're not going to do our own. I'm like, okay, that's fine. We have, you know, this. She goes, we'll just do the traditional vows. I'm like, all right, that, that's fine. A lot of people do that. And she said, uh, can you email those to me? I'm like... Well, you know, it'll just be kind of, I'll say a couple words and you'll just repeat what I say, you know, I, so-and-so, take, you know. It'll just, it's real simple, I'll just go a couple words at a time, you know, if you're nervous, it's no big deal. So, uh, I understand that, but I want to see them ahead of time. Okay. So I, I sent them to her, and they go, they go I mean, just, these are just traditional standard vows. Um, and so she'll say on the 25th of this month, I, Jill, take you, Matt to be my wedded husband, and I do promise before God and these witnesses to be your loving and faithful wife in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, as long as we both shall live. 
Furthermore, I do promise to listen and obey everything you say and suggest. I will always adore you and kiss you, whether your face is clean shaven or full on beard. I will clean and prepare all animals that you kill with your gun, knife, bow, <laughs> or bare hands. I will always smile no matter how much I disagree. I cannot wait to serve you for the rest of my life or for the rest of your life, whichever ends first. You can count on me. Just the standard vows that we do, especially here in Oregon, you know, so. When Julie and I got married, uh, we rewrote our own vows. And so she went, we didn't know what each other was going to say, and, and she wrote her vows out. And, and she said them to me, which were just beautiful, beautifully done. And then I said my vows, and I used my full name, David Wilkes Dendy, as an acronym uh, for, each of my, for each of my, I, David, I'll do this. And I will, A, I will accept, and V, I will validate, I, I will, you know. And when we got to the second D, I said, the D stood for, I will drive you crazy at times. And um, so now when she said, you're driving me crazy, I'm like, just fulfilling my wedding vows, you know, just, <laughs> just doing what I told you I'd do, you know, 10 years ago. When we got to the letter W for Wilkes, I said, I will always be whacked. I will always be whacked. And uh, that was kind of a private joke between Julie and I, because about what, the second date, was it the second one? I don't think it was on the first, we were two checking each other out, you know. Uh, don't reveal too much on the first date. Uh, so by the second date, I said, you know, I said, people are whacked. I mean, people are just weird. You got all sorts of idiosyncrasies and tendencies and little ticks and little that, you know. People are just weird, they're whacked. And I said, I said, if you can accept me as being just whacked, and I'll accept you as being whacked, then we'll get along just fine. And she said, okay. And we've got along just fine, 13, 13 plus years. Um, so I want you to keep that in your mind because we're all kind of wacky people because have you, ever, have you ever bought a used car? You know, and you, you see this sign there on the window and it says buyer's guide. And there's as is, no warranty, or there is a warranty. And a used car typically comes with a as is. It just, this, is who I, this is who it is. And so just kind of keep this in mind. Uh, we've already read the scripture, haven't we? Um, there's, I think there's, there's a great story of someone who comes to Jesus as is. Uh, this man, he's paralyzed, he's paralytic. I'm assuming he's just paraplegic. That's just my assumption. I don't know anything uh, for truth or not, but just assuming he was just paralyzed from the waist down. Um, today, if you are uh, paralyzed from the waist down or you're wheelchair bound, um, the United States have, have, has gone out of their way to make sure you can get, a, get around as easy as you possibly can. Uh, if you go out here to the curb, when you go off the sidewalk, you don't fall off the curb. It's, there's a nice little, uh, what would you call that? Cut out. Thank you very much. Then you can just wheel right off. Uh, if you were to come to our church, there's a ramp. You can go up the ramp. You don't have to make your way up the stairs. Um, so we try to make it fairly, to, United States at least, tries to make it fairly easy, uh, uh, very sensitive about people who are wheelchair bound. I can't imagine what it would be like first century in Israel. Um, you're paralyzed. You, you lay on a mat all day, all night. You are truly dependent upon your friends. Uh, the paralytic doesn't have a whole lot going for him, but he does have good friends. Uh, and when Jesus is in town, the word is Jesus is in town, and the friends are like, we got to get Jesus, we got to get this guy, our friend, to Jesus. They pick him up, we're going to Jesus, see Jesus. He has no choice in the matter. Uh, you know, he, well, I don't want to go. Well, too bad. I'm carrying your stretcher and we're going. And so they go. And they get to the house where Jesus is, and it's packed. I mean, people are standing outside trying to look in and whatnot. And they're like, ah, boy, we weren't anticipating this. What are we going to do? Well, they have a little powwow. I don't think the paralytic has much say in the matter. Uh, they're like, well, what do you think? Eh, should we just barge through? Uh, I don't know. How about the roof? How about we go down the roof, inside the roof, just go down the top? 
Okay, great idea. Now, what other things can we do? How else can we get in the house? Because, I mean, that's ridiculous. Can you imagine someone trying, all of a sudden, I'm preaching, you know, and all of a sudden, what? You know, and all of a sudden, flake, ceiling flakes are coming down, drywall and everything, and everyone, y'all are all looking up here like this. And, you know, I got to tell you, from a, from a speaker's perspective, I want your attention. You know, I don't want you looking somewhere else. You know, I don't want you being bothered by other things. You know, when your cell phone goes off, it drives me crazy when I'm up here. You know, I smile, and you know, it drives me crazy, you know. I pretend it doesn't bother me, but it really does. Um, like just a few minutes ago, someone's cell phone was going off. I, I heard it. I hear him, you know. Oh, I bet he doesn't hear this. Anyway, so they, the friends go up to the top of the roof, and they start clearing, you know, thatched roof, and they start clearing a spot, and they start lowering this guy down. Have you ever been lowered down on a mat before by four of your friends who think they know what they're doing, who have never done that before? Uh, this is crazy. <laughs> it was over here, wasn't it? The mildest is saying it wasn't me, but it was, wasn't it? <laughs> Huh, last Sunday, son, next Sunday, huh? Okay. So, they lower him down, and the, the, the big question is, let's just cut to the bottom line. The big question is, they, he, he lay, I, I picture him, they lower him down, he's laying there on the floor, all these people, crowded people, Jesus standing right in front of him, and the question is, is he gonna accept me? I'm laying here on this mat, and I'm paralyzed. I don't have a little light going for me. I'm not sure I even wanna be here but will Jesus accept me as I am? This is my as is tag. His was very prominent. Everyone knew he was a paralytic. We don't even know his name. He just said the paralytic. Um, just lower him down. Will he accept me as is? This is my as is tag. All of us have an as is tag. All of you walked in here this morning with an as is tag. And the question becomes, will God accept me as I am? Will the people in this room, will you accept me as I, as I am? Um, so the question becomes, what, what's on your mat? I mean, it, it, was, it was very obvious what was on the, the paralytics mat. It's, it's, maybe it's not so obvious of what's on our mat. So let's pretend this is, uh, this is let's just say this is my mat. Uh, this guy probably you know, a four by six mat that he, that he laid on. Um, let's see, I am from Oregon. I live in Oregon. You know, you meet people around the country, you're from Oregon? No, Oregon. Um, does it rain there all the time? No. I thought you lived in Oregon. I do. But doesn't it rain all the time? What did I just say? No, it doesn't rain all the time. At least not where I live. Um, you know, I grew up in Orange County, Southern California. There's even a show called The O.C., you know, and so, are you from The O.C.? I'm from The O.C. Uh, people have all sorts of ideas of what growing up in Orange County is like. Did I surf? No. Did you ski? No. What did you do then? Skateboarded, I guess. You know, I don't know. I mean, just what do people do down there? I don't know. Um, I am an... A-C-O-A. -A. Anybody know what that is? Adult child of an alcoholic. My dad, to the day he died, was, d dealt with alcoholism and, and struggled with that. It affected me. It affected our household. Caused my parents to get divorced. Caused my mom and my sister to move from California to Florida when she was in 10th grade. Difficult, difficult time. It, 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 it weighed heavy on the Dendy household. Um, I'm divorced. Not now, but I, I have this in my back, in my, in my background. Um, I have two children, Morgan and Molly Catherine, who are 25 and 22, uh, who haven't talked to me in 14 years. Uh, Morgan got married this past summer, June the 4th, uh, is expecting twins sometime in March, and I've never been told that by, any, by this family at all, by these girls. I have to find out through grapevine and whatnot. 
uh, no invitation to the wedding, you know, any, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, so my heart, my heart breaks over this kind of stuff. Uh, I am a pastor. Now, I'm getting ready to get on a plane tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to go down to Houston, Texas for a week to uh, speak at a conference. And, and you know what's going to energize the plane? When I sit down in my seat, row 25, seat D, right down the aisle like I like it, and I turn to the person next to him and I say, you know what, I'm a pastor. People are going to be so happy on the plane when they hear that. Uh, it'll just, conversation will pick up. People will be so <laughs> effusive and uh, it's just going to be an awesome time. The pilot will thank me for being on the plane. I'll say I'm a pastor. You know what the person next to me is going to do? Oh, Sky Mall Magazine. <laughs> I mean, you talk about just being the dead part of the party. Just next time you go, like today, if you're at a Super Bowl party, tell the whole crowd, I want everyone's attention. I'm thinking about becoming a pastor. And just see what people do. It's just, it's, it's a riot. Um, there was a time in my life where I was an ex-pastor. I'm getting ready to be an ex pastor Well, anyway. Uh, ex-pastor. And so it's funny, as I went around telling a few people, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, gonna be, I'm moving to Dubuque, blah, blah, blah. One person said, what did you do? <laughs> what do you mean, what did I do? You had to do something, you know, in order to leave. No, 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 I'm just, no, I'm just a different call, you know. But people have all sorts of, oh, you, you used to be a pastor. Oh, hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, as a kid... I smoked pot once or twice. Unlike our former president, I did inhale. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that's part of it. Oh, I love tennis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, first time I ran to Steve Hamlin, and he's like, oh, you play tennis? Oh, don't let your skirt fly up in your face. You know, I mean, like, <laughs> what? You know, this, I don't know. Why do we have that reputation? I don't know. Um, Probably, probably like 90%, at least that's what the studies show, 90% of all the other adult males in here, I have watched pornography. Online, uh, movie, whatever. Uh, I've never starred in a movie, just to let you know. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's out there. I mean, I, I don't know how our young people handle it today. I mean... Three keystrokes and boom, you're, you're at a website that just shows you anything you want. Wow. Um, boy, I, I could go on and on about this kind of stuff. Um, but, but the reality is, here's what happens. When you walk into church, when you walk around town, this is what you got right here. This is your as-is tag. And I don't know what your tag says or what your mat says, but when you walk into this place right here, the biggest question on your mind is, will I be accepted as is? Because I come up, I walk up, hey, I'm David Dendy. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, I'm a tennis player. <laughs> and the question is, Jason, this is me. And will you accept me as I am? That's the question. I'm waiting for a response. <laughs> there we go. All right. All right. August 15th, 2004. How many of you were here that Sunday? Seriously, August 15th, 2004. Okay, the storks, you were here. That Sunday, uh, I preached for the very first time in this church. And um, there were 97 people there that day. And they were gonna vote on me or whether or not I was to be their pastor. And there were 97 people there, and now there's only two left, so we lost 95 people or something. <laughs> I mean, it just, something happened there. But I preached, and then I went with Julie down to the library 
sat in the library while people voted. And the vote came back, 97 people for, zero against. My as is, this is me, this is my as is. Will you accept me? And this church said, absolutely, 97 to zero. I didn't know any of you seven and a half years ago. Uh, I do now. And one of the great joys I've had in the last seven and a half years is welcoming people as is. You came in here, whatever was on your mat, we just said, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. God loves you more than you know. One of my favorite quotes is from Brendan Manning. He says, he says it like this. Jesus comes to you and he says, I love you just the way you are. Nope, that's not the quote. He says this. Jesus comes to us and he says, I dare you to trust that I love you just as you are and not as you should be because you're never gonna be as you should be. So there's no shoulds around here. We just accept people as is. Whatever's on your mat, I'm glad you're here. Welcome. So the good news is that Jesus says, oh, your sins are forgiven. Let that healing begin. And now take up your mat and get out of here. And so the paralytic takes his mat, rolls it up, puts it under his arm, and he's out. And the people said, we've never seen anything like this. My hope and my prayer is that FPC will continue to be the church that accepts people as is because that's what Jesus does. And my hope and my prayer is that the people of the, of the basin of Klamath Falls will continue to say, when they hear about First Presbyterian Church, we've never seen anything like this. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, for our mats, we all have them. And thank you for loving us and accepting us as is. And thank you for giving us the greatest warranty ever given. That when we stumble, when we fall, when we break down, you're there with us to heal us, to love us, to walk beside us every step, every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. <laughs> I really can't sing. <laughs> just do a little dance? Yeah. I'm so glad that Jesus says, come just as you are. And then he heals us. Kept you a little late today, so I won't be able to get you, greet you at the door, but thanks so much for being here, and thanks for coming out today. And uh, Your as-is tags look very nice on you. So let's go forth in the world in peace and be of good courage. Let's hold fast to that which is good. Uh, render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the fainthearted. Support the weak. Love and serve the Lord with gladness and with joy. Honor all people. And laugh often and fear not. Go forth knowing that the love of God the Father Almighty, the amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship, communion, and the power of the Holy Spirit is with you now and forever. And everyone said, Amen. No, they said, Go Giants! Go Giants! Go get them. <laughs>